What happened last time? Look at this. You don't want to know. Jason Statham is back in The Meg 2, but how does it live up to its not-all-that-great original film? Well, we're here to tell you. In this one, a malevolent mining operation unearths prehistoric beasts from the depths of the ocean, including not one, not two, but three megalodons. And rescue diver Jonas Taylor, once again played by Jason Statham, must suit up to face the return of his old enemy. 2018's The Meg overcame middling reviews, including one from yours truly, to become an unlikely global success at the box office. Like its predecessor, Meg 2 The Trench is based on a novel by author Steve Alton. But what's exciting to genre fans is the great Ben Wheatley is behind the camera. For those who may not know his work, Wheatley is widely considered one of the UK's best genre directors, with him having made Killis, Sightseers, Free Fire, High Rise, and most recently the Netflix remake of Rebecca. This is something different for him, being that it's a big budget event movie. How does it fare compared to the original? Truly, it's a mixed bag. While Wheatley adds a little camp to the final act of the film where the Megs and other creatures attack the ironically named Fun Island, the PG-13 rating means it never gets too grangignol or scary. In fact, Wheatley and his writers, who returned from the original, seem to have given up on the idea of making a quasi-horror with them doubling down on the action. Like the first film, this is a China co-production. Due to her complicated situation at home, the film's original co-lead, Li Bingbing Su Yin has been killed off. Instead, her character's brother, Zhu Ming, played by Wu Jing, takes over as the secondary hero to Jason Statham's Jonas, who's now raising Su Yin's daughter as his own, played by a returning Sophia Kai. Of course, when Jonas and Zhu Ming are called to investigate the titular trench in many subs, she tags along only for the whole thing to go awry. In a nod to the physical prowess of the two leads, there's more physical action in this one than there was in the first film. The movie has a handful of human bad guys with a deliberately over-the-top Sienna Gilroy playing the heartless CEO of an evil corporation that wants to raid the trench for priceless minerals. She's hired a crew of mercenaries led by the psychotic Montes played by Sergio Paris Menchetta, who wants revenge on Jonas for putting him in jail years earlier. More bad guys with guns mean that Statham and Wu Jing get to use some martial arts to fight them off, in addition to, of course, the CGI animated creatures. What's interesting is how the movie is edited. With a few tweaks and some reordering, I bet you could make a version of The Meg 2 where Wu Jing is the primary hero and Statham is secondary, rather than vice versa. Indeed, the Chinese version is said to be longer, and one wonders how different the finished films are. Wu Jing is a terrific action star in his native China, but he really struggles with his English dialogue here, to the point that he probably should have been looped. He's quite hard to understand. This isn't the first time these acted in English, with him very effective in SPL 2, A Time for Consequences, but in that film, his limited grasp of the language was written into the script. Here he's supposed to be conversing easily, but it's terribly stiff. Statham plays Statham, of course, with him invulnerable as ever, but he seems to be having a grand old time in the lead and has a couple good one-liners that I'm not going to spoil here. One issue I had with Meg to the Trench is the fact that the cinematography isn't as good as it was in the original. That film was gorgeously shot by DP Tom Stern, but he doesn't return for this one, and now it really looks like just any old action movie. I saw it in a ludicrous format called Screen X, which opens up the aspect ratio during the action scenes, but added absolutely nothing to the film. In the end, Meg 2 The Trench is a mixed bag. More action should mean more fun, but despite more creatures, it actually feels like more of a B-movie than the first one did. Ben Wheatley is one heck of a director, but he's obviously just a gun for hire here, and the movie doesn't have the gonzo touches he's brought to everything else that he's made. It's passable entertainment, but not much more than that. Could have been a great little B-movie had they leaned into the carnage war, but instead, eh, it's mostly just the generic action flick, and to be honest, unless it's a huge hit overseas, I kinda doubt we're gonna get a Meg 3. I give this one a very mixed 5 out of 10.